Okay. Now, this, this uh, kind of like a polynomial is what Strang said, uh, it's got a lot of terms in here. Um, 20 of them, actually, because you go 20, 19, and you count all the way down to 1. I would really not like to have to put into my calculator all 20 of those terms. If only I had some mechanism for taking a long string of things that are added up and then just pop it into a single formula. Oh, wait, we do. Because what is this thing? A20. It's a sum of what kind of thing? It's a series of what form? It's a, it's a geometric series because there's the same ratio being applied over and over again. What is the ratio, by the way? 1.08. You can see it happening over and over again. Okay? So the way that you set this out, because we're kind of making a bit of a leap here, is to say that this A20 is a geometric progression with certain characteristics. Right? Now, you may want to, if you don't have it off the top of your head, you may want to get the reference sheet out here, but I'm going to write it on the side here so that we can refer to it. We have a formula for the sum of a GP, and I want to know what are the things that go into that formula, because I need to identify them off of this. Okay? Now, um, I told a lie, we actually have two different formulas for the sum of a GP. Which one do you think might be most appropriate for this guy? It's the one where the ratio is bigger than one. Do you remember that? I mean, you can use either. You'll get the same answer either way. But I think the one we're talking about is this guy. Do you agree? Stay on the reference sheet if you cannot remember it, or hopefully it's somewhere recently in your notes. Okay? Have a look at that formula with me in red. Okay? There's three pieces that we need to substitute into this. What are the three pieces? I need to know what A is, first term. I need to know what R, the ratio is, which you already told me. And then I need to know N, how many terms are there? Okay? Now, I'm going to do something a bit unusual. Um, I'm going to say A, rather than it being what I physically wrote first, which is this guy, I'm actually going to say it's this guy over here, right? Like I could just write the whole series in reverse order. You'll see in a second why that's so useful to me. I'm going to say it's 10,000 times 1.08. That's the, the last one that I wrote down. The reason why that's useful to me is now when I write down my common ratio, if I were to go from here forward, what am I doing to get from one term to the next? What am I doing? Hmm. Am I, am I multiplying by 1.08 to get from here to here? Look really carefully. I, I'm actually, see how 20 goes down to 19 and then it goes down to 18 and so on? I'm actually, yeah, I'm getting less of them. I'm dividing by 1.08. So if I were to start from here and then go forward, I'd have to say this is 1 over 1.08. Oh, gross. Fractions, right? I don't want to do that. So the advantage of starting at the end is to now say, well, now I'm just going to multiply, right? If I think about starting down this end and then climbing up, it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., which is what I want. Yeah? And that's for all questions. What you're going to find is for all superannuation situations, you get this kind of scenario unfolding, right? You, the very first amount that you put in has the most. So chronologically, this one's going to be the biggest, right? But for my Purposes, it's easier for me to think mathematically like this. That's A, that's R. What's N? It's the number of, well, it's the number of terms, which in this case is the number of years. But you've got to be careful, they're not always exactly the same. Um, if, for example, put down your pens for a second, because this is where you have to be very cautious, right? Look back over at the question over here, OK? Suppose I change the date from 30th of June to 1st of July. Let's just suppose that's what I did, okay? One day's difference. I'm not going to get the same, I'm not going to get an identical series to this, am I? How would it be different if I went to the 1st of July? I'd have another 10,000 hanging out here down the bottom, right? Now, do you see this would actually change, right? Um, A wouldn't be 10,000 times 1.08 anymore. It'd be 10,000. Right, so this has changed. And then this will also change, right? There won't be 20 terms anymore. There will be an extra one. It'll be 21, right? So just by changing the day, you can see this has a minor adjustment to it that will kind of muck with our answer. Does that make sense? So be very cautious. All right, I've got my A, my R, and my N. So I can say, therefore, A20 equals, and I'm going to go for my sum of a GP formula. We'll jot it down and then if you haven't already got your calculator out, please reach for it and let's evaluate it. Uh, what have I got here? Here's A. 
he comes uh, to the n minus 1. There's r minus 1. Okay, so let me pause there, give the opportunity. It is weird, but isn't it so much better than like trying to do this? Um, be very careful on your calculator with your fractions, with your powers, your brackets. Um, it's easy to input this incorrectly. Do you have an answer or a question? Answer. Let's hold, because I think some people are still getting there, just so we don't spoil it. And you're going to give it to me to the nearest cent, yeah? It was a whole number, it wasn't a decimal. Really? No, I got a decimal. Not I really. feel like there should be a decimal. Have a close look. <laughs> well, and by the way, by the way, this is actually a really good point. Like where I, that's looking good. Um, where I kind of look for myself and say, is this going to be reasonable or not? Really? The reason I anticipate a decimal is because of this. Do you see this? Oh, like, yeah, oh that's going to be good. Yeah, that's. <laughs> so this is going to have weird trailing decimals on it. Yeah. So that's why it's going to be mad. okay. I feel like enough of you should get there. Starts with a four, right? Yep. What is it? Four. Four nine four. Four nine four. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. 229, and give me a number of cents. 21. 21 cents. And because we're rounding, you got to say that you're doing that, so I'll say to the nearest cent. Okay. Sense check time. You always should check when you can that an answer is sensible. Almost $500,000. Almost $500,000. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Yeah? You're putting in, or they're putting in $10,000 every year. How long have they been doing it for again? 20 years. 20 years. So if we just put $10,000 under your bed for 20 years, 20 times, right? That's $200,000, right? Sir. And you have a big bed, presumably, okay? It's like building, it's like building, so like $800 the first time, then on that $800 you get more, and then on that more you get more of that. Yeah, uh, so Strang said it exactly right. There's this accumulation effect. So from $200,000, just under the bed, it goes to almost half a million because it has you got your first installment, which doesn't start very big, right? But then by the time you put the next installment in, the first one is bigger, right? Because it's been in there for longer. And then by the time you put the next one in, both of these guys have increased in size. And so you actually have this very long, I mean, this actually looks linear, which is not what it's supposed to be, but you're going to get this GP that's growing exponentially. That's the whole point behind it. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to pause for a moment because I've been talking for a long time actually. You can see there's a second question here and there's only a minor adjustment. It says, how much will the fund amount to by the end of n years? So we've done it to the end of 20 years, right? Now what I'm going to ask you to do is two things. Number one, um, please answer this question for me, right? See if you can come up. Here's my expression right here for after 20 years, right? I would like to modify this and it's only a very minor modification to make this any number of years you like, A of N, okay? And then could you write this down for me because I actually am changing the question that the, the textbook had, right? Once you've got that, once you've answered part B, here's the question I would like you to answer. How long does it take to get to a million dollars? This is about half a million, right? This is about half a million. I want you to try and work out, well, how many years will it take to get this sum up to a million dollars? Can you answer that question for me? So use part B. Part B will be your mechanism to answer that question. Once you've done part B, see if you can use that to work out how many years it'll take to get from here up to a million. Can you do that? And then I'm going to write some assigned uh, questions on the board. A lot of you are at a good spot, but then you've hit a brick wall. So let me help you out. Okay. <laughs> I'm interpreting. All right. So where are we at? Just to make sure we're on the right page, right? What I've written up here is me taking all of the pattern establishment that we did to get to A20 and then say, wait a second, if I know what A20 is, which is after 20 years, then if I want it after N years, the particular part of it that gets changed, it's not, it's not the first term, it's not the ratio, those all remain identical. What really changes is how many terms are in the series, which is this 20, right, you see that? So that's why you can see I've substituted for an N up there. Now all I need to do at this point is just do a bit of tidying up, like it was gross and messy. I could hand this to my calculator, because just numbers, right? But, but this I cannot, because that n up there, I've got to deal with the premium rule. So hopefully you can see just a bit of rearrangement. I wonder if this aligns with what you got in your working. Um, I would highly encourage you to make sure you actually put these, like entrust as little as you can to your calculator, um, because it's dangerous, you guys know how easy it is to put something wrong in there and then everything else ends up problematic. So here's my A of N, 
And then I say, well, I don't know. The whole question is, what value of n will get me to a million dollars? OK, so I'm going to try and solve this. Here's a of n. If it equals, did I say a thousand? A million dollars, right? I want to get to a million dollars. So now this is the thing I need to solve, right? So I want to make n the subject. And now you're realizing I need to call back on knowledge from earlier in the year or even last year, right? If I divide through by this 135,000, OK, uh, what do we get? I think from memory it's like 200, 200, I think, on 27. Something like that. OK, I'm trying to recall me working this out earlier. OK, you get this. And then you say, I can add 1 to both sides. That will get me closer to making n the subject. So that should be like so. OK, because the denominator is 27, so I add 27 to the top. But at this, at this point, you can't get any further by hand. You have to call back the fact that if this is an exponent, right? This is an exponential equation. I need to rephrase it to become a log, log equation. Very good. Log equations will change the subject to the exponent, the power. Sorry, the index is the subject, right? So it's going to be log, what will be the base? 1.0. Yeah, the base of this is the base of that. That's how I remember it. So 1.0. A, it's down the bottom. This weird looking fraction is up the top, or maybe you have written in decimal. Okay. But this I can't put in my calculator either, because my calculator has two bases, 10 and E, neither of which is 1.08. So what do I do here? Uh, base. Yeah, I need change of base rule, right? So it doesn't matter which one you do, base 10 or base E. Okay. Um, I do base E because I am lazy and it's easier to write. So I'm going to have ln of something divided by ln of something so else. Which one's on the top, which one's on the bottom? The Think carefully. The, the 0 0.818 goes to the top. Okay, now the way I remember it is the bottom one goes to the bottom, which is actually easier to do. Wait, what? The bottom goes to the bottom. It does. It does. <laughs> and then the top goes to the top. And this, this we can throw into our calculators. Okay. Now we're still, we're still not out of the woods yet. Okay. You're going to get um, some number with a lot of decimals after, and I need the decimals this time. It's 20. Seven point six five. Give me a few more. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. Okay. Now at this point, where we, all this process, we've been getting like dollar figures out. So we've been rounding that kind of thing. You know, you've got to do some rounding with this, but you have to be really cautious. You're actually kind of lucky. I could maybe I should have chosen different numbers here to be able to say this is if I just round to the nearest whole number. The nearest whole number is 28, and that is the number of years because I've got to get all the way to the end to get that interest repayment. Okay. But just put your pens down for a second and look up. Suppose our numbers ended up a little bit different. Suppose at this point here, instead of getting 27.65, right? Suppose I got 27.45. Just suppose, right? Now this number does not round closest to 28. Okay, it rounds closest to 27, rounds down. Okay. However, even under this circumstance, the answer is still 28. Why? What do you think, so? If you haven't reached a million at 27. Mm. Um, after 27 years, even though you're actually closer to a million at this point, you haven't got there yet. You're at 991,000 whatever, OK? The interest payment hasn't been made, so you're not going to get it until the end of that year has elapsed. So it's really important you think carefully about the situation, not just look at the equations. Yes. Okay? I have a question. Yeah. 